Ni hao YouTube. Ni hao YouTube. So today we are getting on the bullet train from here in Chongqing all the way to Chengdu. It's going to be Sophia's first time, not just on a train, but on a bullet, bullet train. train. Yep. Going 300 <laughs> kilometers an hour. Crazy. So yeah, let's go into this station. We have our tickets. They're written in Chinese, so we need to ask someone what to do and where to go. But yeah, let's see. Let's get on this train and uh, yeah, let's have a fun day. Okay, so these are our tickets just here, and as you can see, 10 12 goes our train. Now I'm told that the trains go exactly on time, so at 10 12 it will pull out of the station. So the current time is 9 23. So yeah, we got to go in, find our train, we might even eat some food as well. Okay. So yeah, should be good. Okay, so we're just at the security gate, as you can see just here behind me. We got to get our passports out. That's one thing when you're traveling China, you need to make sure that you have your passports uh, everywhere you go, especially when you're a foreigner because they'll scan your passports and our ticket is actually linked to our passports. So yeah, let's find these now. Okay, got our passports here, so yeah, let's go in. Okay, so we got to scan our passports, but I'm not too sure what we're doing. Ni hao. Okay, so we're in the little foreigner line here. Sure, sure. Okay, now Sophia's turn. So we're going on this side gate here. All the Chinese citizens go on this side, and we go this side. We've just got to put our bags here through security, and then try and find our gate somewhere up there. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we just got to pat down security check as well. It's really good, really safe. Ni hao. Ah, sure, sure. Okay, cool, that was easy. That was fairly easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy just filming the security and stuff. Like they don't care. So easy. Yeah, it's uh, I you think know. this is the first country. Whoa. <laughs> you got you, you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sophie's bag is pretty heavy guys. Yeah, it's like one of the first what we, what were you just saying? It's first like first country where like it's easy to see film film in uh, places like this. Yeah, like a lot of people would say, "Oh, you can't film in China, you know." like communist country yeah. can't film you know all of this stuff but it's not no. true like no one cares the security guard literally just walked behind me and looked at the camera <laughs> they don't care so no it's problem. good let's find someone ask them about our ticket and see where we need to go okay so just here is the ticket board and uh from there we need to see departure terminal we got to go to as you can see though it's pretty cool they've got kfc just here they've got some other brands of food outlets just here so we might try and eat something as well before we get on the train yeah you look so cute with your little bag on. <laughs> well your big bag sorry <laughs> oh my gosh man chinese train stations next level <laughs> this looks like an airport What do you think of this? Massive! <laughs> this is crazy! It's like a massive, it feels like we're in an airport right now. This is bigger than some airports I've been in the world. This is bigger than a Philippines airport I've been in. Cool. And this is a train station. <laughs> so this is our train here, G8612, and our check-in is 13B. So let's go find 13B. I see 22A, so let's see. I think it's down here. You know, I think we did something wrong. What? We've went through the south gate, or meant to in, enter in the north gate. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can cross in between the middle. Because see this separator here? What are you saying? Four plus four, two L. <laughs> Do you understand I don't what understand, I'm saying? No. Oh, okay. All right, all good. Okay, so we found it. Turns out there wasn't a gate in the middle, so we were all good. Um, doesn't matter if you enter in north or south. So yeah, this is us here, 13B. So good, this is our gate. Um, I think they just call everyone when we're meant to go. Last time I was in Shanghai, that's what they did. So I guess that's what we should wait for. I think in the meantime, let's get some food. Okay. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I just left Sophia with watching the bags. As you can see here, they also have massage chairs as well. As you wait for your train, get a massage. Why not? It's just crazy, the absolute menace 
size of this place and it's not like it doesn't get used like all of these chairs are taken it's busy in here guys Alex was telling me my friend Alex who was saying a hundred trains go from Chongqing to Chengdu every single day every 24 hours just crazy <laughs> so here we are um, this looks like a little bakery place let's see what we can find here It's not really what I thought. I thought it was like going to be some type of 7-Eleven. Oh, they do have sandwiches though. They look good. Maybe we might go with a sandwich. I'm not too sure what type of meat this is. I think it's chicken. <laughs> so, let's just get this. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Okay, that was easy. I kept on scanning my Alipay QR code and she's like, it's done, it's done. I'm like, okay, no worries. All right, so we've got a small sandwich for the road. Sophia and I will probably share this, even though Sophia said she doesn't want anything. Sometimes she'll say, babe, can I please have some of your food? And I said, why didn't you tell me I would have bought you something? <laughs> so cute. Yeah, let's wait for this train. I'm actually gonna go and scare Sophia. Ni hao. Did I scare you? Yeah. I got a sandwich. I was thinking we might share it on the train. Yeah, sounds good. Do you like chicken and lettuce and butter? Yes, but I don't like this bread. Yeah, I, it doesn't really look like real chicken, does it? Yeah, that's okay. Looks good though. It's yeah. uncooked. It does look uncooked, doesn't it? Hopefully it's nice. So, you excited for the train? Yeah. 300 kilometers an hour. Yeah. It literally goes like this. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah, like a bullet. That's why it's called bullet train. So quick. Keen. Keen, yeah. It'd be funny if we get on it and it's not a bullet train and a normal train. But I'm pretty sure it's a bullet train. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The ticket's in Chinese, so I translated it. I think it's a bullet train. Oh. Yeah. So it should be okay. <laughs> Time to go. Time to go. I was just picking up a beautiful, beautiful lovely Starbucks coffee quite expensive but really good this south line up here you can see everyone lining up waiting so yeah we gotta go okay one Thank two you. three oh nice good job okay okay so this is our lineup that we're dealing with 13b on the right hand side so that's one crazy line let's come here Don. we're getting this line here Okay, ticket check. Okay, business check in. Because we have different passports, maybe we go on the business check in. I'm not too sure. So let's see what happens. Okay. Yeah, should be okay. I think it's 10 to 10, so we've got 22 minutes to get on. Yet. It's yeah. Okay. Almost, yeah, so about 17 minutes until we board. So, should be good. Okay, so we're just getting our passport scanned again. Okay. okay, how good was that? We just skipped the entire line <laughs> with the tourist tourist privilege. How good's that? Okay, cool. Alright, so now we gotta go down to the platform and wait for our train. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so we're just gonna ask the train conductor what part we gotta go to, because I have no idea. Um, so yeah, let's see. This one? Thank you. That one. We just moved out of the way and I was looking for our seat number, but by mistake, this is our seat where we moved out of the way to, so that works out well. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, nice train. <laughs> right? Yeah, lovely train. Got a nice armrest here, hold my coffee. We booked these seats to have the baggage room behind here, but people started putting their bags there, which is all good. 
we can't really recline our chairs like this lady has done. Um, but that's okay, we're only on here for an hour, so should be good. Yeah. Yeah, should be awesome. Okay, so right now everyone is putting all of their bags away. Everyone keeps putting bags behind us. All good. So we leave in exactly 10 minutes time. I'm so keen. I'm so keen to see the countryside as well. Like, cause we haven't seen much of like country China, rural China yet. So it'd be cool to see all the factories, all the infrastructure, all the villages that we pass at 300 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Crazy. Oh my God, just insane. So a few things about this train. They have business class, which is technically first class. They don't have first class on these trains. Business class is first class. We're currently in second class and I believe there's a third class as well. So we're sort of in the middle of the comfort range, which is pretty good. And the price we paid was uh, 150 yuan for this ride. So in US dollars, we're looking at about, yeah, about 18, 20 dollars for this ride, which each, which is really good. Like to get so far 300 kilometers for just that much is amazing. In our own nice wide seats, we've got lots of leg room here too. So yeah, not bad at all. But do you know what else isn't bad? My latest acquisition, the striking yellow 30 inch check-in from Level 8 Cases. So you might be wondering, Jack, what's the big deal with this suitcase? Well my friends, it's not just any suitcase. This masterpiece features a wide body and cleverly handled design, allowing you to pack in more than what you've ever could before. I even managed to squeeze in my baby elephant on my recent journey. But it's not just about looks and capacity. This polycarbonate shell is extremely tough and scratch resistant. And the best part? The ultra smooth 360 spinner wheels that make you feel like you're gliding on air. Level 8 has a wide range of suitcase selections. So don't forget to use my code JACKTOR for a 10% discount at checkout. Click the link in my description to grab your Level 8 suitcase today. I think we're about to leave soon as well. The conductor is just here. Yet yeah, two more minutes, so she's just waiting to wave us off. So not even right on time, but just before 10.12, as you can see here, just at 10.11 we started moving. 10.12, already moving. Wow, these trains are exactly on time. <laughs> Crazy. So they just said on the speaker, the, f the train that we're on, the model of the train is the Fuxing model. So we're definitely on high speed train. I wasn't able to go and see the front of the train because uh, we didn't have enough time to get on. But uh, yeah, it's good to know we're on the bullet train. Sophia's first train experience and being a bullet train experience. How good is that? So yeah, pretty, pretty happy. Really, really cool. Ooh, police right there. <laughs> okay, so we're just going through a tunnel now. You can hear it, we're speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. Are you ready to see what it looks like when we go really fast out through the tunnel? All right, let's get Sophie's reaction. Still waiting. <laughs> One hour later. <laughs> Two hours later. <laughs> So we're not going full speed yet, so that's why it doesn't look as quick. But I say we're going about 100 kilometers now, and it'll speed up to about 300. Um, so yeah, let's see how fast we can go. Gosh, the infrastructure here is just crazy. So like, we're going past all of these rural villages. We're seeing a lot of older homes. Uh, it sort of looks a little bit like Nepal as well. Sometimes when you think of China, you think everything is modern, but not really. Once you get outside the cities, you see the older houses, you see the 
uh, village people, um, you sort of you see poorer people as well. Well, they might be rich. It's hard to say if farmers are rich or not sometimes, but the villagers, they're doing all of their um, making and farming. farming and getting the crops and it's really cool like you sort of see the real China as well you see dirt roads but also through it you see these amazing bridges the infrastructure the train lines so it's a real like contrast it's like sort of the modern and the modern infrastructure and the farmland sort of just merges into one it's like it's really really cool it's very different you don't see this in many other countries this like investment into such rural areas as well it's like it's really cool it's beautiful. yeah So we've just pulled into this little local station here as you can see we've got the local station here we've got a massive big building just for this local station <laughs> and there's no one here in this building it's empty inside yeah. So like, what do you think of all the features of the train? Like, do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Look at the space I have for my leg. Like, huge. And this little pocket here. It's, it's nice. Yeah, what about the temperature? Are you hot, cold? I'm good. Yeah, I good. think because you had coffee, that's why you're hot. Yeah, I had coffee and I got really hot, but I'm good now too. But I'm quite hungry. I think we should... Hungry? Do you want to have these sandwiches? Oh, I knew. I told the vlog. I said, Sophia doesn't want anything, but she'll eat some of my sandwiches. Sometimes she'll say, Babe, can I please have some of your food? And I said, why didn't you tell me I would have bought you something? <laughs> well, I'm a bit hungry, that's why. Right. Oh, and that's exactly what I said. <laughs> right, yeah, we're going to eat these sandwiches now. So another thing as well that's really interesting, we were just in a tunnel then and we had 4G the whole time in the tunnel. <laughs> Crazy. The Chinese just love to build infrastructure. I've, yeah, it's interesting. Um, so I was doing some research and I'm like, why are a lot of these villages and a lot of these towns not as developed as the cities? And from what I understand, the Chinese government wants everyone to sort of migrate to the cities and they make the cities mega big. They put in the best infrastructure, the best metro systems, the best roads, and they want to try and get people out of these small towns and into the cities. Still keep farming, but try and get all, you know, doctors, lawyers, like sort of smaller towns that have built up a sort of um, local economy into the cities, which is a really interesting plan. It's quite interesting um, to see that, but I'm still sort of understanding all of the reasoning behind China and still just really trying to understand everything about this country because it really is fascinating and sometimes very secretive to the West as well. And the Western media reports a lot of different things to what we see here, so sometimes there's a lot of confusion too. So yeah, it's interesting. So one thing I want to say as well, and Sophia just made a really good point, is the people out here in the villages uh, that, who are not in the city, they might be really happy where they are, you know, and you have, like, from research as well, we have seen that the government does help the people out here in the villages, and you'd sort of like to hope so as well, because they are the people, you know, doing the farming, getting the food for everyone in the city. So it's important that they have these people as well. So it's sort of like finding this balance of bringing some people out of the village, but also leaving enough infrastructure in for everyone else who's happy to stay as well. Yes. So like, yeah, it's really interesting to see, you know, most of the stuff you see in China, we just see these big cities. So it's so cool to see this on our train ride, um, sort of the real China and a lot of what China actually is and not just the cities. So it's interesting.
Okay, so we're just arriving now in Chengdu. First impressions so far, the, uh, the trees and everything looks really, really green here. The sky looks really clear too, which is nice. So yeah, should be good. We're meeting our friend at the station as well. She's going to uh, be helping us travel around here. When you're in China, it's good to have local friends. So uh, we're going to be meeting her as well. Very important, yeah. yeah. Especially when we're filming so much. So uh, yeah, all right, let's get our bags off and let's go. So we've now arrived. Are you excited? I'm really excited to explore a new city. Let's go. Okay, so just before we go up, I just want to show you guys the front of the train as well. The train model and the type of train we went on. There's no, no standing sign, so let's see. Hopefully we can film the front of the train and not get yelled at. Let's see. I don't know what this means, but let's see. Wow, cool. Would you look at that? Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. That's the uh, that's the train model we were just on. I don't think you're allowed to go past there, but we just did. Let me know if that says in Chinese you can't go. But uh, yeah, we did anyway. <laughs> a little bit naughty to get a thumbnail, but that's okay. But yeah, so that's the train. Pretty pretty cool. Not bad. I felt like I was inside a bus. Yeah. But faster. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think at one point it got up to 300 kilometers, but I think most of the time it was like 200 or 250. I don't think it needed to go that fast. Probably in the tunnels it got up to like 300 or 350. But yeah, this this train station is absolutely massive. What's your thoughts on this? Massive. <laughs> yeah, it's and, big. <laughs> yeah, it's so big, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. While everyone is lining up for the escalator, we're going to take the stairs. The healthy option. Training for Everest. Yeah, we're training to climb Everest later in the year, so we've got to get our steps in. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so just checking out. So unfortunately, we actually can't use these gates right here. Uh, we have to go through the foreigner gate as well. So we just got to find our friend. Hello, Ni Hao, how are you? Hi. Jack, nice Hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, Jack, nice to meet you. Sophia, What's your nice name, sorry? Uh, my name's Queenie. Queenie? Yeah. Okay, I thought so, I just wanted to confirm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and what's your name? Su Feng. Su Feng. Su Feng. Su Feng.